What's up YouTube? Today I'm going to be working on my 2011 Toyota Tacoma and specifically what I'm trying to work on today is installing a trailer brake controller. Before I get any further into the video I'd like to ask if you could go ahead and like the video and share the video when you get to the end. Also subscribe to the channel. So the work that I'm doing today is the trailer brake controller. The brand that I picked is a brand called Redart. There are a bunch of different brands out there and you can find really easy install information for Redark. They have everything plug and play specifically for uh, Toyota Tacoma. So in the kit that I bought, I have the Redark Liberty brake controller. The part number is right here, um, E-B-R-H-A-C-C-N-A. That's the Redark brake controller that I bought. And the reason I picked the Liberty over the Elite, the Elite is more expensive, I think by about $100, but the Liberty does everything I'm gonna need. The extras that the Elite has that the Liberty doesn't has, have is that it has the ability to make adjustments. So if you're off-roading with the trailer, the angles that change when you're off-roading, the Elite brake controller has a better ability to adjust how much trailer braking you're gonna need based on the, um, the shift in the vehicle and the trailer itself. I don't plan on off-roading with a trailer, so that's not necessary, but if you were doing long hauling and you were um, going off-road with your Tacoma and you had a trailer on the back, you're probably gonna wanna go with the Elite. Um, mine's mainly if I'm hauling a trailer that's got equipment around town, I wanted to be able to have a brake controller for it. Another upgrade that you're gonna wanna do on a Tacoma specifically, if you're adding a lot of weight in hauling, is you're gonna wanna upgrade your front rotors. Even if you add the brake controller, um, if you're hauling all the time, I think it would be better to go ahead and add um, a brand like Power Stop has tons of reviews and gets used all the time. But you're going to want to upgrade the upgrade the caliper, the rotor, and the pads um, for the Tacoma to Power Stop. So I've got my Redark Liberty brake controller, and it comes with the dial itself. It doesn't come with the plate, the the actual button location plate. So the that's a separate part. So I've got that here. It actually comes pre-drilled and it's the correct size for the left side of the dash to the left side of the steering wheel. And the part number on this is TPSI-007. And I also have that factory wiring harness. So this is TPH021. The white connector is the connector that goes onto the plug that's in the Tacoma and the black connector is a connector that fits right into the Liberty um, brake controller. And the only thing that's extra on this one is that there's a little white wire that comes off here that's actually for a ground. So you need to find a bolt under the dash. Um, I'm, gonna put, I'm gonna put everything up under the dash, so I'm gonna find a bolt under the dash that I can tap into that is grounded. And so that's the project for today. So everything I'm going to need to get to is pretty much right here. The plug is actually over here around the corner and you can visibly see it. You don't, it's not, you don't even have to take that kick panel out. You can visibly see it over the top right behind where the emergency brake pedal is. And I'm going to get to this empty, sorry, I'm going to get to this empty uh, spot up here. That's where the trailer brake controller is going. That's where that button, that's where this button is going. It's going right up there in that blank. So my wiring harness is gonna get plugged in over here. Um, hopefully that'll be easy enough. I don't wanna to add too much work. And then this box itself actually has um, the side of it. Actually, they have a little bit of information about the accessories sold separately, but um, the case for this actually has screw holes in it. So you can screw it to something underneath. You can, you could uh, zip tie it to it as well. Um, once I get in there, I'll see which method I choose. But that's pretty much where we're going to be working. I'm going to take out this WeatherTech floor mat and just uh, be down here on the carpet. I've already got the seat back as far as I can to get in here and uh, make it easy as, as easy as possible to work if I have to be in here upside down taking some screws out and putting stuff in. So we'll just keep moving forward. Thank you. 
So this is the top of the kick panel right here. That white connector that you see right there, that's actually the connector that I'm going to plug into with the factory wiring harness that Redark has. And right here, this bolt is the bolt that I'm probably going to tap my ground into. And there's a big huge pocket on the left side of the on, on the left side over here, there's a big pocket back there that I think I'm going to tuck the trailer brake um, control into. You don't have to have the controller um, mounted in any specific orientation. It can pretty much go anywhere. Uh, you don't want to wire it to, you don't want to strap it to like a bundle of wires. There's a big bundle of wires right here. You don't want to strap it to something like that just because you don't want to mess with the signal or the electronics in the controller. Um, so... I think I'm going to be able to do everything right here to the left side above the kick panel. And I'll show you real quick how I checked this bolt right here. And it's a uh, ground. So I've got my multimeter on continuity. And then I'm just going from the bolt itself. So this metal plate here and the bolt itself. And then there's a plug that's on the um, where the fuse harness is. There's a ground up here, and so whenever I touch the ground, that shows me that the bolt is a ground. So I'm getting continuity to a ground over here. So that's that's good. That makes it so I don't have to go anywhere else to try to get my ground from. So I'm gonna get started and get that get the blank button out and put the read arc button that they sent. Um, snapped in so everything's pretty much plug and play I'm not gonna have to drill anything
All right, let's take a look up under here. Sorry if the camera angle I had over there didn't work the whole time, but it was just really hard to show exactly what was going on up in here. Up in here. So what I've got is there's the ground wire, the white wire, and you can see it, it comes underneath here and then goes up over to the black connector up there. And I've got that brake controller tucked in behind that wire loom up against that carpet. So the black connector, that four by one black connector is up on top and the looks like a ethernet type connector is on the bottom and there's actually plenty of room for it to go around that one wire loom and go underneath. So, and I've got the, the see the mesh plastic wire that comes around here and then does a circle and goes up. I've got it tucked over the top of that black connector and that's doubled up over there. And then the black wire to the ethernet is just doubled up behind this um, plastic connector here. And so I've got it all kind of tucked in clean back there. So that's where the controller is. So you can see where it's at underneath there now. And that's it for the installation. My hand is just chewed to crap. It's all red and swollen now from getting up in there next to that emergency brake. That was the hardest part. So throw this back in now. So at this point, because I don't have a trailer attached, um, the brake controller itself, uh, the light isn't on and it's not showing that it's actively braking while I'm driving. It's in, I think, what's called a breathing mode. Um, might even be in a sleep mode because it doesn't even recognize that there's a trailer. But when I push that button and that blue light, the blue light doesn't flash. It comes on to full brightness and then it slowly dims down and that's in the manual. Uh, and shows what that means. So everything appears to be working correctly. Obviously there's gonna have to be a part two to this to show what um, difference it makes in adjusting. But as you can tell, it's a real clean install. There's nothing that you can see from the outside. There's not even a controller attached underneath the dash anywhere. So that's nice and as you could see in the video earlier, that um, the emergency brake isn't interfering with anything. There's nothing even close to it. You saw that I took the cable, the little ethernet looking cable that's the goes to the switch, and I route, I actually just pushed it from this side in after I took the button out. That's way easier than trying to fish something up from the inside. You could also take an old clothes hanger and stick it down in there and wrap it around the wire and then pull the wire up through. Other than it just being tight to try to get in there around that uh, the emergency brake, it's a little bit easier to kind of, if you would need to work behind it to release the emergency brake so you can work behind it and push the emergency brake back down so you can work in front of it. But mainly the wiring part of this is just once you get the things connected, the switch connected at the top and all that buttoned up and then the button pushed back in. And then you get all the connectors connected to the actual trailer brake controller itself. And then run that white ground wire up to that bolt. The rest of it is just kind of wiring management and that's just gonna have to be how you wanna do the wiring management. So everything, the ground wire, the, the switch itself, the knob itself, and the brake controller are all right there. Kind of bundling and, and rounding up that wiring bundle to make it so that it was easier to kind of tuck in and put back behind and underneath and around the um, you know, the side to get it tucked in is pretty much the hard part. Now I did the test drive and there's nothing that's going to happen with the test drive that's going to show me anything about how well the trailer brake controller itself works. That's, that's just going to be a part two. So I'm going to label this one as a part one. Um, but just so you can see what it takes to install the trailer brake controller, it should be the same for the Elite. So you can use this for the Elite or for the Liberty. This install is done. It's not an expensive assembly the brake controller, the button, and the wiring harness. All the links to those parts will be in the description. Hopefully it'll help you with figuring out where you want to put the trailer brake controller. That's pretty much it. So thanks for taking the time to watch. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll appreciate it and I'll see you on the next one.